Well, my takeaway from the 101 Canuck series is that it is one of the most frustrating undertakings I've ever had at this newspaper. And it's what made it fascinating. It's what made it fun. It's what made me want to tear my hair out. It's what made me adjust my list six ways to Sunday, talking with different people. Uh, I found it bizarrely strange. Um, obviously what you were doing is you're comparing eras and that's extremely difficult to do. The changes in the game have been so significant over the years, over the, the, uh, the span of the Canuck franchise from 1970 onwards that it made the, the task almost impossible. Evaluation process evolved for me. I think I looked at the, the three Stanley Cup finalist teams. I think that's where I w weighted heavy. I think I looked at impact of the, the franchise. So I looked at a guy like Jeff Brown, who was here a short period of time, but was so great in that, in, you know, in the, the Pavel Bure playoffs. Uh, I looked at, you know, Christian Ehrhoff, who was so great, you know, back against the Bruins, you know, the Bruins in those playoffs. And I think those were the guys I really weighed heavily on. And then I looked to guys with, uh, longevity, and I think that was you know my, my two things. Uh, biggest surprise it was after you got past 20, it was it was pretty hard. You were throwing darts and you know kind of hoping to get guys. In picking 101 Canucks in some sort of order, this is what I found. The first 10 were were pretty easy. You, you jostled for positions. You know the Henrik Pavel debate was in there. Uh, 11 to 20 was pretty easy as well. 21 to 30 got a little bit more difficult. 31 to 40 that slowed me down once I got past 40 it was an absolute nightmare well first of all the geniuses who put this project together decided to have it go to 101 names which is altogether 50 60 names too deep if you ask me so I absolutely refuse to spend a lot of time defending my 98th overall pick on a list that probably should be capped at 40 or 50 I settled on Krutoff because at some point, impact on hockey came into play for me as we got this far down the list. So that's the reason, existential or whatnot. I would say this, the geniuses who came up with 101 Canucks, if they wanted to go right to the bottom of the pond, they should have expected some nasty bits in the deepest of depths. When I first heard about the project, I went, well, oh, 101 Greatest Canucks. That, that's an interesting concept. Are there 101 Greatest Canucks? I mean, let's be honest. This is a franchise that, that's been to the dance. It's never won the big trophy. It's never won the Stanley Cup. Uh, it, it's hung its hat a lot in 1982, 1994, 2011. Those are great years. Got to the Stanley Cup final. But I think you have to look a little bit closer because when, when you talk about players with this franchise, you talk about guys who excelled on the ice, uh, who are probably good in the community, especially the charitable community. And I thought that had a lot to do with my personal selections. Uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of great debates out there. And, and I found that, uh, you know, if you look at the, the guys whose jerseys are hanging at Rogers Arena, that can kind of give you a good starting point. But if you go a little bit closer, a little bit deeper into their personalities, that had a lot to do with my list. So my initial thought when I got the email from Jonathan asking me to be a part of this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so flattered. This is great. This is going to be so much fun. And then I actually sat down with the list and uh, was overwhelmed at how do you even begin to sort, sort these amazing NHLers into some sort of order without really truly going by stats, which is what everybody kind of defaults to, I'd imagine. And then I got to the minutia. It's like, well, obviously Trevor Linden needs to be first, but where does Pavel Bure go? And is Henrik Sedin in there? And what about Alex McGillney? And then I brought in a couple of uh, knowledgeable fan friends of mine who helped me out a little bit to make sure that not just my favorite eras of Canucks were represented, but all eras of this team. Yeah, so as I worked through the process, there was a couple of, uh, a couple of things that, that became apparent. One is for a team that's been around for uh, 45 years, uh, they really haven't produced a whole lot of good players. I kept thinking if we were doing this for, uh, let's say, Chicago starting from 1970 or Montreal or Boston, you know, what would the 45th or 50th player look like? And when we were going 45-50, there were some guys who were, you know, just really, really average NHL players. Um, that, that, was, that was one thing. The other thing was the amount 
amount of bad trades the Canucks have made, uh, and, and, and over and beyond the, uh, the the really obvious, the Cam Neely ones, and they've they've made some good ones, but uh, you know, the, letting Kurt Fraser go uh, at, at the time the time they did, you've got this young power forward who's maybe the most feared fighter in the NHL, but can also score 30 goals. You, you, you trade him. There was a couple of other deals they just seemed to make because they were bored more than anything, just to change the mix. That 82 team was actually better than I think people give it credit for. There were some really good young pieces in place, but they they blow they blew it up at, within a couple of years, and it took them a long, long time uh, to get it back. So th th those are kind of the two things that stood out for me.